short list of findings on the dead. I hope they'll help you. The beings that now shamble the streets bear a wide variety of countenances and details, which I will chronicle here. My intent is for others to find this, though I doubt it'll be much help. If nothing else, writing will help me catalog my findings on the dead. The most important thing in the end of the world is what kills them and what doesn't. Although, death is bit of a meaningless word now. Decay, healing, and hunger have much less of an effect on them than they would normal humans. Hunger is their most important need, which means you can bait them with meat. They avoid almost all else beyond water, but water is commonplace. Severe head or neck injury will kill them, or at least make them stop moving, as will a king's honors, or a resounding decapitation for those not native to Rame. Piercing the eye has the same effect, but it must be deep enough. Wounds to the limbs will only slow them, forcing them to limp, drag, or crawl themselves towards you. Slowing them is good, however. But if you can kill them, don't hesitate. Heart injuries and blood loss do not affect them as they would normal humans. They continue on until all blood is drained, and then continue a little further, jerking about like a puppet breaking down on stage. The dead that walk now do not all appear dead in body. Some are alive and only dead in mind, and have been bitten or otherwise wounded by the truly dead. Their flesh grows paler, and in many of the freshest corpses, their lips and cheeks are stained a brown green as though they've messily eaten something. The living dead sweat far more than normal humans, and greedily drink from wells and rivers. The truly dead who walk do not sweat, but will still die without water. None of them possess the faculties to raise a bucket from a well, and so have to find their own ways. From the tower I have currently ensconced myself in, I can see three wells, though one is further away. The furthest one had dead piling up within it until the water level rose so the ones at ground level could drink. The well beneath my window has a nearly living one fallen in it. No attempt has been made to rescue it. This is how I began to understand that they can die. Further down the road, another group fell in a well and began to tear at the stones, eventually tunneling their way out. This shows that they can understand certain causes and effects, but they don't appear to think more than the average aunt. Despite all they eat, they never gain weight. Water will bloat them until it is sweat out, shriveling their skin and making them even more gaunt. Dead who were fat and life begin to deflate, skin hanging from them in rolls like curtains, until those begin to vanish as well. They don't appear to defecate, else the streep should be knee-deep in it. I do not understand where the food goes. It boggles my mind and breaks a few known rules of science. As mentioned above, the body's natural healing is far slower in the dead than in humans. They do still heal, but in many cases, when a wound stops bleeding, it will not repair itself any further. Many shamble about with open wounds. Perhaps infection doesn't pose a threat to them. And in extreme cases, longer-term infections, they appear to soften, as though they are a melting candle. Their bones grow softer weaker, pliable. The skull of many I've seen are squished, as though dented, but there are no bruises or wounds. Still others seem to have lost height. It's baffling. But a weaker skull is merely an easier thing to cave in. They break like a pumpkin, over rotten and ripe. There are many of them, yes, and that's terrifying. But the most important thing to remember is they do not think, they cannot think. You can, and I can. 
My name is Asher. I'm still Asher. And I can still think. Good luck to you. May God have mercy on you. And may she have mercy on me too.